Hey guys, welcome back to another True Crime Thursday. Today I'm going to be talking about the disappearance of John Wise. He was one of the earlier balloonists of uh, hot air ballooning. Uh, he made a lot of innovations and he was uh, a very smart man. And then one day he just vanishes. So sit back, relax, and I hope you enjoy. John Weiss was born February 24th, 1808 in Lancaster, Pennsylvania to William and Mary Trey Weiss, who angelicized the name to Wise. He was the fourth of eight children. He worked as an apprentice cabinet maker from the age of 16. A short column and plaque were erected near the corner of East Marin Street and North Lime Street in Lancaster by the Lancaster County Historical Society in 1955, stating that Wise lived most of his life near this spot. He had been interested in ballooning since reading an article at the age of 14, and in 1835, at the age of 27, he decided to construct his own balloon. Wise made his first ascent in Philadelphia on May 2, 1835, as the construction had been self financed, the materials of the homemade balloon were not the best quality. He used muslin sheet coated with a mixture of bird lime suspended in linseed oil to make the sheet impermeable. Unlike most balloonists of the day, Wise was not ballooning as a commercial venture. He was just doing it because he wanted to. He was like, yeah, and scientific curiosity, of course. The ascent was short and uneventful. He took a second flight in Lebanon County on Independence Day, 1835. He attempted to open the valve on the top of the balloon, but lost control and it burst, compelling him to descend. On October 1st, 1835, he attempted an ascension from Lancaster, Pennsylvania, but was thrown from the car and became unconscious while the balloon ascended alone. On May 7th, 1836, he ascended again from Lancaster and landed in Harford County, Maryland, about 75 miles from where he began. While he was emptying the car of its cargo, an explosion of the gas occurred and burned him severely. After all these attempts, he's like, I'm just going to keep doing it. Crashing, going unconscious, lighting on fire. The huge. He made a voyage from Philadelphia on September 18th. 1837, alighting in the Delaware River where he was rescued. <laughs> On this trip, he set loose two parachutes for the purpose of demonstrating the superiority of the inverted parachute. In October 1837, he ascended again from Philadelphia and alighted in New Jersey, 40 miles from where he started. His early flights in Pennsylvania, he conducted various experiments on atmospheric pressure pneumatics, and hydrostatistics. While his primary interest remained scientific, he joined the ranks of commercial balloonists performing at shows and county fairs. In 1838, he developed a balloon that, if ruptured or deflated, went aloft, it would collapse in the form of a parachute, the bottom half folding into the top, making your stereotypical parachute shape, which would allow the occupants of the basket to descend without injury or loss of life. Although the idea was not original, he was the first to build a working version and the first to demonstrate its use. On a flight from Easton, Pennsylvania, on August 11th, 1838, in bad weather, the design was put to an impromptu test when Wise's balloon was punctured at 13,000 feet. In less than 10 seconds, all the gas had escaped. The balloon descended rapidly with an oscillating motion and on reaching the earth, rebounded, throwing Wise 10 feet from the car, but he was uninjured. He later advertised that on October 1st, 1838, he would ascend and in the air would convert his balloon into a parachute, which his feat was successfully accomplished. After the death of Robert Cocking, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> mm. After the death of Robert Cocking, 
In the first modern parachuting accident, questions were raised over which of the two competing parachute designs were superior. The cone-shaped parachute produced by Sir George Cayley and used by Cocking, or the umbrella-shaped design used by André Jacques Garnin in his successful jump of 1797. Wise conducted numerous experiments comparing the two designs and found that Cayley's design always made a more stable descent. Cocking's failure was put down to poor calculations and substandard construction. Another of Wise's innovations was the rip panel for controlled deflation on landing. Prior to Weiss's use of the rip panel, balloons would drag along the ground when landing and secured by ropes and anchors. Balloonists wishing to deflate their balloon would have to crawl up the netting outside the balloon and open the valve on the top, slowly deflating it. But many balloonists got trapped within the netting and the balloon itself and would die. Suffocating. Weiss also recognized that the heat from the sun played a valuable role in warming the gas within the balloon and built a black balloon to utilize this technique. He was the first to observe the jet stream, noting that there was a great river of air that blows from west to east. On August 17, 1859, he made the first flight of local airmail in the U.S. from Lafayette, Indiana to Crodsford, Indiana, in a balloon named Jupiter carrying 123 letters and 23 circulars, of which one cover was discovered in 1957. His trip of 25 miles ended when he was forced to land lack due to the lack of buoyancy. As one who recognized uh, the possibilities of balloon flight by use of high wind, yet to be named the jet stream, Wise made plans for a transatlantic flight in the balloon known as the Atlantic. Unfortunately, his test flights for such a trip were less than successful, where he had enjoyed company with another yet younger prominent balloonist, uh, Mr. John LaMountain. An 1857 pre-flight of theirs had ended up caught by the windstorm over Lake Ontario, forcing a crash landing in Henderson, New York, which damaged a balloon and ended their partnership. La Mountain took over ownership of the Atlantic, but any further talk of a transatlantic flight was never heard. Wise was one of several top American balloonists who made a bid for chief aeronaut of a yet-to-be-established balloon corp for the Union Army during the opening months of the American Civil War. Against major competition, which included Thaddeus S. C. Lowe and John La Mountain, he lacked either the endorsements of the science community, like that of Professor Lowe, or the insidious propaganda ploys given by La Mountain. However, he did attract enough attention from to topographical engineers to be recommended for building a balloon for the purposes of demonstrating aerial surveillance for map making and undercut the bids of the others by two hundred dollars by july 19th 1861 general irvin mcdowell's army was prepared to face the first battle of bull run mcdowell had called for a balloon to be sent to the front but the engineers awaited the belated arrival of john wise Thaddeus Law was at the ready and was had been called up to inflate his balloon. At last minute, John appeared out of nowhere and handed the papers with papers in hand demanding that he go up and that Thaddeus take a seat, <laughs> which was rightfully commissioned into action. Major Albert J. Meyer and 20 men from the 26th Pennsylvania Volunteers secured the inflated balloon to a wagon and proceeded toward the battlefield at Centerville, Virginia. In his haste to move forward, Meyer entangled the balloon in the trees, which disabled the craft from really doing anything. And this permanently removed Wise from the involvement in the Civil War. Damn, that's unfortunate. That's some bad luck right there. <laughs> On September 28, 1879, at age 71, he disappeared 
with a passenger, George Burr, on a trip in high-speed winds from East St. Louis, Illinois, over Lake Michigan. It is reported the balloon was seen over Carlinville, Illinois, or was seen 35 miles from Chicago, drifting northeastward toward Lake Michigan at Miller's Station. No trace of Wise or the balloon has ever been found, but the passenger, George Burr's body, was found in Lake Michigan, which means they probably crashed. <laughs> in 44 years, Wise had made 463 ascents and published two books, The System of Aeronautics in 1850 and Through the Air, A Narrative of 40 Years Experience as an Aeronaut in 1873. And to this day, the case remains unsolved. To conclude, it's quite obvious what happened here by the fact they found his uh, flying partner's body. What most likely happened is the balloon was caught by high winds, something caused it to crash, and they drowned, or hit something, or, you know, whatever else, but they both died. They never found the balloon or John Wise, they only found his flying partner, George Burr. Uh, so it's possible that maybe George fell out and John lived, but they never. there's no records of John after this. And I would highly doubt a 70-plus-year-old man just decided to, like, skip town. There was no reason for him to do that or disappear or make a new identity. So the most plausible explanation as to what happened was that they crashed and they both died. Maybe George got, you know, flown out of the balloon and, you know, thrown um, maybe his body just floated to the shore and George's and, uh, and John's didn't. I'm not sure. They never found John or the balloon. No evidence of either of them has ever been found near Lake Michigan. And by now, it's most likely deteriorated to the point where you're not going to find anything unless it crashed on land in the middle of some woods, which I'm doubting. I'm betting it happened in the middle of the water. So probably crashed and died but hey they never found a body or the balloon conspiracies Ooh. <laughs> i hope you guys enjoyed as much as you can enjoy a story like this i'll be back again on thursday with another true crime thursday and monday with whatever i decide to post comment your theories down below do you think that they both crashed and died or do you think something else could have happened all right guys i'll see you later Shh.